before ascending to stardom at Manchester City, Kevin De Bruyne navigated a challenging journey. Once hailed as Chelsea's future luminary, De Bruyne found himself unceremoniously dispatched to Wolfsburg. In the Bundesliga, his brilliance caught the eye of Manchester City, and under Pep Guardiola's tutelage, the maestro evolved into the quintessential modern midfielder. How did De Bruyne's trajectory lead him to perfection with Manchester City? De Bruyne's prodigious talent emerged during his tenure with KRC Henk. Graduating from the academy, he swiftly ascended to the first team. Even before becoming a cornerstone for KRC, the young De Bruyne commanded respect from his peers. In training sessions, he directed senior players and didn't hesitate to critique mistakes, a trait confirmed by former KRC Henk captain David Hubert. De Bruyne's debut in May 2009, at the age of 17 years and 10 months, was marred by a 3-0 defeat to RSC Charleroi in the Belgian league. Despite this setback, he went on to amass 103 games, contributing 17 goals and 36 assists for the Smurfen squad. Kuhn Derden, the technical director of KRC Henk's youth squad, expressed concern about De Bruyne's assertive attitude. Disagreements with coaches and teammates were not uncommon for the young player, but such clashes were deemed typical for a unique talent like De Bruyne who possessed his own vision and drive for excellence. Chelsea, enticed by De Bruyne's performances with KRC Henk, initiated contact in the summer of 2011. However, the Smurfin insisted on retaining the player at the CGK Arena for another season, thwarting the initial transfer attempt. De Bruyne reportedly seats at KRC Henk's management for their unilateral decision, fueled by his fervent ambition to embrace the English league with Chelsea. In the winter of 2012, the Blues ultimately formalised De Bruyne's transfer, acquiring him for a noteworthy €9 million. Euros. Chelsea secured the midfielder until 2018, with a weekly salary of £30,000 sterling. However, they opted to loan De Bruyne back to KRC Henk until the culmination of the 2011-2012 season. His triumph further enriched Chelsea's roster of talent sourced from Belgian soil, following the acquisitions of Thibaut Courtois and Romelo Lukaku. André Villas-Boas, at the helm of Chelsea for the 2011-2012 season, did not specifically request De Bruyne's transfer. Despite being a player long observed by Chelsea, the Portuguese manager respected the club's decision, recognising De Bruyne as a pivotal asset for Chelsea's future. Villas Balls, known for his ambition to attract young talent, had previously brought in promising players like Juan Mata, Thibaut Courtois, Omelu Lukaku, and Oriol Romain. While Villas Balls aimed to infuse experience into Chelsea's youthful squad, De Bruyne's arrival drew criticism for allegedly contradicting this philosophy. The loaning of De Bruyne back to KRC Henk, despite Chelsea's need for seasoned players in the midst of the 2011-2012 season, was viewed sceptically. Chelsea languished in fourth place in the Premier League standings, trailing by an 11-point gap from table-topping Manchester City. The decision to secure De Bruyne, perceived as raw talent, was deemed by some as a questionable allocation of resources for a club aspiring to contend at the highest level. Following a stint at KRC Henk, Chelsea dispatched Kevin De Bruyne to Werder Bremen due to an excess of promising midfielders and wingers. In this new setting, De Bruyne showcased his potential, tallying 10 goals and 10 assists, earning him the Bundesliga's Young Player of the Year award. His stellar performance played a pivotal role in rescuing Werder Bremen from the threat of relegation. Zlatko Januzovic, the former captain of Werder Bremen, lauded De Bruyne's impact, emphasizing that the team's Bundesliga survival was largely attributed to him. Despite initially needing time to adapt, De Bruyne's evolution and substantial contributions were evident. At Werder Bremen, De Bruyne embraced a new role as a central midfielder, distinct from his natural position as a winger at KRC Henk. This positional shift heightened his visibility and showcased his enhanced quality on the field. As the season concluded, De Bruyne was recalled to Stamford Bridge by Chelsea's coach, Jose Mourinho. Making his debut against Hull City in the number 10 position behind Oscar and Eden Hazard, De Bruyne stole the spotlight with an assist. However, he found himself benched in the subsequent match against Aston Villa, and Mourinho opted to reserve him until mid-season. De Bruyne's Chelsea career struggled to gain traction, with just nine appearances during the first half of the season. The competition with Juan Mata, Eden Hazard, and Oscar further limited his opportunities. 
In a surprising turn of events, Chelsea sold De Bruyne to VfL Wolfsburg for €20 million Euros during the winter transfer window. Mourinho, critical of De Bruyne's work ethic, accused him of being too lazy, contributing to his disappointing stint with the Blues. Despite Chelsea benefiting from the sale, the departure was regrettable for Eden Hazard, who regarded De Bruyne as a fantastic player deserving of a longer stay at Chelsea. Mourinho's decision to part ways with De Bruyne, despite his extraordinary quality, left a lasting impression on his former teammates. Kevin De Bruyne's tenure with VfL Wolfsburg spanned only one and a half seasons. In the summer of 2015, Manchester City secured the player for a whopping £55 million, making him the most expensive acquisition for the citizens at that time. The contract was set for six years, accompanied by a staggering weekly salary of £250 sterling. De Bruyne's arrival significantly contributed to Manchester City becoming the most lavish spender in the 2015-2016 season, with a total transfer fund outlay of £208 million sterling. Manuel Pellegrini, the coach at the time, expressed delight with De Bruyne's presence, emphasising the club's commitment to attacking and entertaining football. Despite initial doubts from British pundits Paul Merson and Phil Thompson regarding De Bruyne's quality and the perceived extravagance of the transfer, both pundits had to eat their words after witnessing De Bruyne's impressive debut season. De Bruyne made an immediate impact, registering 17 goals and 15 assists in the 2015-2016 season. Under the strategic guidance of Pep Guardiola, De Bruyne underwent a remarkable transformation, emerging as the world's premier midfielder. Guardiola's influence maximised De Bruyne's potential, refining his defensive capabilities with improved interception and pressing skills. The player's creativity as a central midfielder was honed to perfection, and he thrived as Manchester City's primary playmaker. Throughout Guardiola's two and a half seasons at the helm, De Bruyne's assist record surged, reaching 50 assists in just 123 Premier League matches. This accomplishment surpassed Mesut Ozil's record of 50 assists in 141 games. Guardiola showered De Bruyne with praise, declaring him as one of the best players he had ever seen, highlighting the Belgians' exceptional quality and impact on the pitch. De Bruyne's influence reached new heights as he propelled Manchester City to Premier League dominance, clinching consecutive titles in the 2017-2018 and 2018-2019 seasons. The 2019-2020 campaign saw him match Thierry Henry's long-standing record of 20 assists, untouched for 11 years. De Bruyne played a pivotal role in realising Manchester City's grand aspiration, securing a historic treble, including their inaugural Champions League triumph. The radiance of Kevin De Bruyne's talent faced a temporary setback in the 2023-2024 season due to a hamstring injury. Forced onto the operating table, the player endured a five-month absence. Manchester City, sans De Bruyne, struggled to maintain their peak performance, suffering three defeats and slipping to fourth place under Pep Guardiola's stewardship. The team found themselves trailing five points behind table-topping Liverpool. De Bruyne's absence also took a toll on Erling Holland's goal-scoring prowess, as the strikers' Premier League productivity dipped. Holland managed to score only 14 goals, a decrease from the previous season's 21 goals by the midpoint. The lethal combination of De Bruyne and Holland, responsible for 13 assists from Holland's 52 goals the previous season, was notably absent. Encouragingly, De Bruyne successfully recovered from his lengthy injury layoff. Guardiola reinstated the former Wolfsburg player in the FA Cup clash against Huddersfield, where De Bruyne, in a 33-minute cameo, promptly provided an assist for Jeremy Doku. Statistically, De Bruyne recorded 47 touches, one key pass, and an 80% passing accuracy. Guardiola welcomed the maestro's return with elation, expressing deep appreciation for the Belgian's impact. As De Bruyne resumes his role, Manchester City is anticipated to regain their superior form, with Guardiola's squad expected to mount a challenge against Liverpool in the Premier League title race. With his illustrious career at Manchester City, the question arises, does Kevin De Bruyne merit recognition as the citizen's all-time best player?